In the olden days, before ChatGPT was around, learning coding where a new technical thing meant having a million tabs of Stack Overflow open, staring at your code for hours, not knowing where the bug is coming from, until you finally realize it's because you wrote a semicolon instead of a colon. These days, I haven't used Stack Overflow for months. I don't stare at documentation anymore. I also don't stare that much at my code anymore, trying to find a bug especially. I'm honestly so jealous of people who learn how to code with ChatGPT. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you guys my favorite ChatGPT study tips for learning technical things so much faster. And do stay till the end of this video because I'm gonna show you guys a supercharged method where you're combining all these tips together to produce something even more powerful. Finally, before we get started, I just wanna make a plug for my newsletter called Boops Keyboard. It's about learning, it's about coding, it's about self-studying and AI tips, and it's completely free. So you should check it out over here. I'll also link in the description. All right, let us go. So my favorite ChatGPT self-study tip is definitely what is called the gameplay prompt. So I'm gonna show you guys what that is. So pulling up ChatGPT over here, I'm gonna copy in a prompt that we have. Let us look at this. So it's called, the prompt is called, let's play an interactive visual game to learn Python using Naruto because it's my favorite anime. Um, I should have to write Python to navigate through the game. So as you can probably tell by the prompt, it's a way of learning Python coding using Naruto. So it's so much more entertaining than your traditional way of doing it. And it's interactive. All right, let's embark on an epic adventure through the hidden leaf village in the world of Naruto using Python. So here's the background story. You wake up to find yourself in the mystical ward of Shinobi where ninjas possess magical abilities. You're in a hidden leaf village, a place brimming with aspiring ninjas. The villagers have heard stories of a mysterious artifact that holds the power to bring prosperity to the village or doom it to an eternal curse. Damn. A prophecy states that a stranger from another world, you, is destined to either secure the artifact to the good of the hidden leaf village or unleash a cataclysm? Cataclysm. Bad. No, we do not want cataclysms. As you are getting your bearing, you spot Naruto Uzumaki training near the entrance of the village. He seems excited to meet you as he has heard the prophecy too. Naruto wants to join you on your quest to find the artifact. All right. Okay, so it's an interactive text-based game. So it's setting things up over here. You can have your inventory and you can also check your location and you can help if you have a hint. So right now we don't have anything. Location is hidden leaf village entrance. So there's some options that you can do so we can have these different choices accept naruto's help and ask him to join you visit a ninja tools shop to see if there's anything useful start exploring the village without naruto's help because you're an independent person as naruto about the artifact and its history please write a python code to choose what you want to do so let us actually try this out so let's say our choice is going to be equal to oops shit Ooh. i did it wrong the choice is equal to four called the leaf of ages <laughs> it's said to be a leaf that never wilts and has inscriptions in the first hokage damn so if you do want to try out this prompt yourself and potentially play the game too check out the link in the description where you can get access to this prompt as well as the other prompts i'm going to be talking about uh throughout this video as well second a tragedy tip for helping you sell to study technical things so much faster is by using it as stack overflow especially if you need to do something specific tragedy is really helpful for that so let me show you guys an example say you would need to do something in your python code um, that takes a nested list like this so it's like a nested list with food carrot mushroom candy and a another list with animal, cat, dog, and elephant, and turn it into a dictionary. So take the first element like food and the key and the, make the rest, carrot, mushroom, candy, into the values. So something like that, right? You can ask ChatGPT to write you the code to do this. Press enter. Certainly, you can achieve this by iterating through each of the sublists in the nested list, and it will actually write the code for you to do this. Super helpful. Next tip for using ChatGPT to self-study coding and technical things is by using it to generate different ways of solving a problem. So let's jump back to ChatGPT. So we're still going back to this example over here, right? Where there is a solution that's being given. Um, but what's really helpful when you're learning something is by understanding how you can approach and solve the same issue or same problem with different ways. That allows you to have a deeper understanding of what it is that you're trying to learn. So you can ask ChatGPT something like, can you give me three different approaches to solving the above problem? Also provide a description and breakdown of the efficiency of the method. So from this example, here's three different approaches to convert a nested list into a dictionary, each with its own characteristics and efficiency. First one is the example that was shown earlier, which is looping through the list. So you're, it tells you what it is that it's doing and it also gives you the time complexity, O of N, as well as 
displaced com complexity. And it has the code over here. So the next tip that I have for you for self-studying at technical things with ChatGPT is by using ChatGPT to help you make projects. So I feel like for a lot of people, when you're first learning technical stuff and you're just like learning it, it's hard to come up with projects that are interesting to you and relatively unique um, and just like is able to help allow you to use the skills that you want to be practicing. Well, ChatGPT is really great for this. Um, and here's a prompt to illustrate what I mean. So here we have act as an expert coding tutor and make a Python project for me as if, as if I am someone who just started coding and is especially struggling with object oriented programming. So I'm able to provide more detail um, about where the emphasis should be. I want to be able to do this project in less than five hours because don't want to be spending forever coding and it should be about Obito fighting Naruto which is clearly what I'm interested in and you press enter all right since you're a beginner to the object oriented programming I'll keep this project simple I'll guide you through creating a mini text-based game where Obito finds Naruto I hope Naruto wins Naruto better win let's break it down into steps and it has classes for characters and it tells you what to do oh it actually shows you what the code is in this case if you are learning though I don't recommend you actually look at the code I recommend giving it an attempt first and then referencing the code that's being provided to see what mistakes that you've made how it is that you can improve stuff so it also says it gives you an explanation for what's happening and then finally this project should be a good starting point for you to get familiar with object working programming in python you can expand this project by adding more characters more complex ai logic uh, for the opponents special abilities etc as you become more comfortable with coding happy coding so this is a way of coming up with exciting projects that you're interested in doing the next tip that i have for you on how to use ChatGPT to self-study things faster is by using it to comment code this is especially helpful if you're pasting a code snippet in and you're like i don't know what this code is doing and instead of just like figuring out line by line and just copy pasting it into google and looking at stack overflow uh, you can get ChatGPT to annotate the code and explain to you what it's doing step by step really Really, really helpful tool on chapter gpt we can write and then we can copy the code here so in this case i have a fibonacci um function dec declaration so let's see what it does so what we have over here is definition of Fibonacci and it tells you, okay, this is a little bit hard to read over here, but it says define a function that named Fibonacci that takes a single parameter n. Um, and then we can see that for each line, if the input number n is less than or equal to zero, then you return an error message stating that the input should be a positive integer. And then it talks about if the input number n is equal to one, blah, 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 then it does this. So it goes through, it explains step-by-step step what the code is doing. Also here, recursively calling the Fibonacci function turning some of these two calls if you're learning recursion for example this would be really helpful in understanding how recursion is being used in this instance i especially like using this to say like i'm like reading through documentation or something like that and then sometimes they would have like example code snippets about to illustrate like how it is that you can use a certain api i'd like to copy that into ChatGPT and ask me to explain to me what's happening in the example that was provided so for example what you can have here is you have a post request that's here for the youtube api and then you can write can you comment in line the following code about what it's doing and then it says this code represents the http post request to add a video to a playlist on youtube via youtube's data api and then it breaks it down for you oh apparently there was a small mistake in the provided json payload as well well, thank you, ChatGPT. This is an example of how ChatGPT can identify errors in your code as well. Um, yeah, so this is really, really helpful. I find that instead of just like screening through documentation, if I just put the examples that are provided, it helps me learn a lot faster what it is the code is supposed to be doing. So this one goes on to the next study tip. So say you like wrote some code and it's producing, it's not producing the results that you want. Maybe it has an error in it. So you can use ChatGPT as a way of debugging your code, pointing out what the errors are and then fixing it. Please fix this code for me. So there's syntax error in your code due to non-ASCII character before the last return statement. Also in the second return statement, you're trying to concatenate a string and integer, which will cause a type error. So it explains to you what's wrong with your code and it fixes it and also gives you some very intelligent suggestions on what else to do um, from here. And kind of adding on to this as well, you can also ask it to give you commentary about what it thinks about your code, how to optimize your code as well. This is again, really helpful because essentially like having um, a much more experienced programmer point like do code reviews for you and point out where it is that you can be 
improving. And this is so huge because so much of like learning to code, like it's hard to like learn by yourself and improve by yourself because you don't know what you don't know, right? So you don't know how to optimize certain things, but ChatGPT really helps you do that because it just, it's like a coach. It points out to you where it is that you can be optimizing, you can be improving. It's a game changer. It's definitely a game changer. The next tip that I have for using ChatGPT to learn how to code and other technical things is to use it to translate between different coding languages. So say for example, you already know how to code in Python, but you're learning Java as another coding language. And you come across something that you want to do in Python that you know how to do, and you want to be able to do that in Java as well. So what you can write in ChatGPT is like translate this Python code into Java. And you can paste a code over here. In this case, it is a function for reading a file. So it's reading a file, returning its content as a string. And it goes on to do that. And it's a full, it also has like errors over here with exceptions. And then it's, this is what ChatGPT came up with. The following Java code accomplishes the same task as the Python code provided. It reads the contents of a file, returns it as a string. If the file is not found, it returns an error message. If any other exceptions occur, it returns a different error message with details of the exception. So it's able to do all of this. Damn, this takes me back public class. It has been a real public static void main. This has been a very long time since I wrote Java code. Um, but yeah, this is an example of how you can do this and also gives you a nice explanation for the translation of that code for your new thing super super helpful the next tip that i have for ChatGPT to self-study so much faster is by asking it to use analogies and examples especially when you're learning technical things what can be really helpful is understanding by using analogies of stuff whereas it's kind of like abstract and hard to understand and also examples when you see full examples for how things work uh, in a practical sense that helps a lot to solidify concepts that you're learning here's an example of of going to ChatGPT and jumping in here. Act as an expert coding tutor and explain to me dynamic programming using analogies and examples. So this part over here is called the persona pattern um, and it's part of some of the tips I use for prompt engineering. So if you do want a guide about using prompt engineering, like prompt engineering crash course 101, do let me know in the comments and I can do that. But this dynamic programming is a concept that has baffled me for ages. Do I truly understand it now? No, I don't think I truly grasp it even now. But say like, you know, when I first started learning, I was like so confused, I didn't get it. And I can use ChatGPT to help me understand the concept better by um, asking to explain to me using analogies and examples. So it's telling me, certainly dynamic programming is a technique used to solve complex problems, breaking them down into smaller or manageable sub-problems and then storing the results of these sub-problems so that they can use them later. Let's use an analogy and then dive into some examples. So analogy is that you're imagining you're trying to climb a flight of stairs and you can either take Take one step or two steps at a time you're curious about how many different ways you can climb to the top so it goes through this full analogy over here um, and then it also goes through an example such as using fibonacci sequence and a coin change problem and it gives you a brief summary i think something else that would be really helpful as a follow-up is can you write the dynamic programming code solutions versus not using dynamic programming so here's like a follow-up question that you can ask. Okay, so Fibonacci is a community recursive approach over here. And then it goes the memoization for dynamic programming. This is how it is that it would work. So it's like a classic example that we're giving over here. Hopefully you can see how useful this technique is when you are um, trying to understand like certain concepts in any technical subject, really. Or pretty much I would say like, in any subject in general, but I think especially helpful in technical subjects. The next tip that I have for you guys is for when you start learning a little bit more uh, technical stuff, then you start needing to look at other pieces of technology, other pieces of software, and then being able to interface that with whatever it is that you're building, usually through an API of some sort. As you're doing this, usually there's like a lot of documentation that just like showcases the way that you're able to do these API calls, how it is that you're interfacing. Me personally, I don't have the patience. When I sit there and read documentation, I'm just like, uh. <laughs> You know, not not my thing. It's like, so there's usually like a lot of documentation available. So for example, here is the documentation on OpenAI in order to use their API for the OpenAI models. Um, so as an example, you can see there's like a lot of stuff going on over here. It's like all these things. Oh my God, all the stuff that you can do, right? So I am not the kind of person that has the patience to read through documentation. Uh, this is the completions endpoint. So instead of reading through all of this, this would be really helpful in helping me figure out what's actually happening over there. So for example here, can you please do it? 
for this documentation. And as it's providing the results, what's also helpful is after you, you tell it what the documentation is, then you can ask it to start creating uh, what you need to do for that specific API call. It's like, how do you actually use um, what's being written in the documentation? You'd be like, okay, given that this is the documentation, how do I write the function to do this? So. This is also super helpful. Okay, uh, so it does all of this, you know, shortens it a lot, and it says documentations for OpenAI's API endpoint that generates text completion for a given prompt. You can make a post request by this to use the service here to parameters. So this to you all the parameters and gives you a brief synopsis of that. This API endpoint is useful for tasks like chatbot responses, content generation, and more by providing a prompt and having a model generate appropriate text for completions. So really helpful when you're learning how to use a new API. We're just trying to understand. Um, some new concepts that you have instead of reading through all the things. Okay, guys, are you now ready for the ultimate supercharged method of combining all of these tips, hacks, and techniques together to create something that is even more powerful? Okay, so we have all these tips and techniques that are available, um, and you can copy those prompts in to do like the things that you want it to do, which is really nice, really convenient. Um, however, say if you're learning something, generally you'll be using a lot of these techniques and tips consecutively or at the same time even. So while you're doing this, it, it gets a little bit annoying because you have to keep inputting the context that you have every single time and then inputting the prompts as well. Um, and then if you talk with like ChatGPT for, for a little bit longer, what ends up happening is that sometimes it forgets what the context of what you're doing is. So what I want to show you guys here is how to create essentially like a version of an AI tutor that's able to do a lot of things that we talked about previously. So I'm going to go through and break down the prompt now. So your name is Jiraiya GPT, a personal coding tutor that has the personality of Jiraiya from Naruto. Do you guys think that Jiraiya is a better sensei or Kakashi? Let me know in the comments. So you first say hi to your student that is a Genin, that is you. Then ask them what they want to learn. You can tell them to input any of the following. So I put three different ones over here as an example, but you can also put in extra techniques as well. So the first one I have is called variations number topic. The second one is make a game for learning topic and explain topic. And I'm going to go through each of these and explain how that works. So when the user writes, make a game for learning topic, play an interactive game to learn topics. So you're giving an instruction when the user types that uh, you're making a game specifically for learning that topic. The game should be narrative rich, descriptive, and the final result should be pieced to get, piecing together a story. Describe the starting point and ask the user what they would like to do. The story unravels as we progress step by step. The next command I can give it is variations number topic. When a user writes variations number topic, provides variations determining the underlying problem that they are trying to solve and how they want to how they are trying to solve it. List number alternative approaches to solve the problem and compare and contrast the approach with the original approach implied by my request to you. Uh, so this is an example of what we were talking about earlier, how it's really helpful sometimes to have multiple ways of approaching and solving a problem. It's really helpful for learning. And the third thing that we have here is explain topic. So when the user has explained a topic, then it actually gives an explanation, assuming that the user has very little coding knowledge. Um, and then ask you for a first task. And it also shows that caps lock are placeholders um, for content inputted by the user. So what is really happening here is that you're creating this AI tutor for yourself called Jiraiya GPT because you know, have a little bit of personality and you're getting it to have a menu options of different things that you can do. And you're telling it like for each menu option, how it is that you can enter it and then what it's supposed to do when you enter that menu option. This is really helpful because it's like this ultimate prompt that you can also add on like additional menu options as well. And from doing this, you can interact with it and then you don't have to like repeatedly type in something that you want it to do where like it forgets the context of what you're talking about and then you have to input again uh, the context. So it's all like written here. And then using this, you would get the response here. Hello, young Genin. It is a pleasure to meet you. The name is Jiraiya GPT, but you may know me as the Toad Sage of the Coding Mountain. <laughs> I'm here to help you harness the chakra of the coding arts. So tell me, what scrolls of knowledge are you seeking to master today, my young ninja apprentice? Uh, let's do like explain object oriented programming is the topic. So, ah, object oriented programming or OOP as is often known. This is one of the fundamental jutsus in the coding art. Oh, see, it has personality. Imagine you're a shinobi creating ninja tools for your mission in 
object-oriented programming, you create objects which are like different tools, each with their own abilities and attributes. It's exciting. Classes and objects. Imagine class is a blueprint for creating a ninja tool. So it's like different types of tools like a kunai. Oh, makes sense. The kunai itself is an object created from this blueprint. A class defines what attributes such as size, material, and methods like throw or conceal your kunai can have. An object is an instance of this class of kunai crafted according to the blueprint. Makes so much more sense now, doesn't it? Ah, yes. It actually writes out the class in Python code over here. Encapsulation, um, yeah, and it goes ahead and talks about all these different things as well, which are the tenets of object-oriented programming and traits about it, like polymorphisms and things like that. You can do this and then say you want to have like variations. You can also like make a game for learning this topic if you're trying to learn object-oriented programming. So there you have it, the supercharged method of creating your own personal AI tutor using ChatGPT. If you're interested in getting this prompt and also the other prompts, again, like check out the link in the description. Okay, so I also had a question for you guys. Would you guys be actually interested in watching me build out in full like personal coding tutor? This is the like more crude version of it in the form of a prompt. Yeah, I was actually thinking about building out this version and actually hosting it so you guys can use it and not just have to like copy paste it over here. And there would also be more functionalities that I wouldn't be able to put in as just the prompt. So let me know in the comments if you'd be interested in a video about that. All right, so that is all that I have for you guys today. I really hope this was a helpful video for you. Do let me know in the comments what you think about these prompts, if you try out these prompts, and also any other like techniques and self-study tips that you have for using ChatGPT. I will see you guys in the next video or live stream.